we usually think of evolution happening very slowly, over billions of years. But bacteria and viruses can evolve in much less than a human lifetime, and scientists have to keep up. Consider H1N1, the virus linked to swine flu. Swine flu has actually been around for a long time, but the virus that causes it can transform very quickly. Viruses are probably as old as life, and it's quite likely that there will be new lineages of viruses uh, emerging as we go forward in time. So they're very old and they're very new simultaneously. Very old and very new? That's because ancient virus lineages can mutate, that is, change their genetic structure very rapidly. It actually has a high rate of mutation. Um, and, and actually, um, to, uh, to, to properly understand kind of the evolution of the influenza virus, it's important to understand the mechanisms by which the virus can mutate or change. Actually, influenza also has, it consists of eight different segments. And actually, if you have a mixture of the segments, for instance, if you have some segments that come from pigs, some segments that come from birds, some segments that come from humans, you can then produce an entirely new virus. That's called antigenic shift. And that actually is the cause of a new virus causing a pandemic. All of the pandemics uh, in the past century, the 1918 Spanish flu, the 1967 Hong Kong flu epidemic, were because of antigenic shift changes in the genome. On the other hand, there's another method of change, and that's called antigenic drift. Antigenic drift occurs when you have very small changes in the actual sequence of a current, currently circulating strain. And this is the cause of what we call seasonal influenza. This is the reason why uh, people can become infected by influenza year after year after year. You know, despite having had influenza before, you could very easily get influenza again. These rapid changes keep health officials on their toes. What happened recently may be an antigenic shift event. The virus looks like an entirely new variant. But the problem could get worse because of antigenic drift. Uh, by the time autumn rolls around, when you start seeing the next season of influenza, there may be subtle, very small changes in the genome that will affect um, the transmissibility, the virulence of this virus, you know, whether or not it's going to cause more severe disease, whether or not you're going to see it again in a different form. Right now, it doesn't look like an extremely um, high virulence strain, but it could be that with a small number of mutations, it could become so. Since the outbreak, Dr. Chu, his team, and many others around the world have been working on sequencing the entire genome of this virus, cataloging the virus's continuously changing genetic code. Understanding the entire sequence of the virus is actually also very important, that if you understand the genome of the virus, it can give you a lot of information as to the virulence of this, how deadly the virus is, as to whether or not it has the potential to develop resistance to current available, currently available drugs, as well as, um, as well as a tool for outbreak investigation to understand where the virus came from and how it is evolving. Scientists and public health officials must understand the fast-paced evolution of viruses in order to combat their potentially deadly effects.